Williams. Chris. Chris Hassel. Two guys named Chris. Presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery. From the Channel Seed Studios, this is Iowa Everywhere. Channel Seed. Seedsmanship at work. Hello, friends, and welcome to Two Guys Named Chris here on Thursday, the 26th of October. We are presented, as always, by our friends at Fairway Meeting Grocery in the Channel Seed Studios. Every day, did you know that when we go live, you can watch us live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, or you can download us, of course, on the Iowa Everywhere podcast feed. My name is Chris Williams. We are in a little bit of a scramble mode this morning. There's something going on on the internet. Uh, Because Hassel's got computer problems. Twitter, we believe, to be down. We just got a lot going on. Um, How are you today, Chris Hassel? Have we been hacked? What the the hell's going on? I don't know. I don't. Everything is fine here. Yeah, there was a big internet outage in Iowa yesterday. CenturyLink was like out throughout the whole state. So, really happy to be back this morning. So, I apologize for my voice too. I'm still a little, uh, still a little scratchy from yelling at Van Winkle all night on Monday in Minneapolis. He was so obnoxious. Look at that crowd. Walking into my stadium. 70% 49ers fans on the north side. Stop, stop it. Van Winkle is just <laughs> completely, you'll love this, Matt, or Chris. We're on the way up, and Matt's like, yeah, I heard it's going to be uh, 60% 49er fans tonight. I'm like, Jesus, you don't know. They let me down. <laughs> uh, we will get to all of that. And I'm sorry, Iowa State fans. We had fully planned on spending 90% of the show on you guys today. And then Cade McNamara comes out last night with his Instagram post that he is returning to the University of Iowa. Yeah, but we already knew that. Yeah, he made it official, though. It's still news. I mean, it's what, news, but it's not something we need to spend a lot of time on. because. Yeah, we what was your reaction knew. to everything that he had to write we have it up on the screen for for everybody to read we don't need to go over it didn't have one i mean it was i we already knew it was happening i i would have been surprised if he said anything else i mean we had already been told by the collective that he was planning on coming back he didn't refute that everyone was reporting that um but he came back and said it great it's now official Uh, hopefully he's on the road to recovery the only thing newsy I take from it and I and I read into it does this does this have anything any bearing on Ferentz coming back next year or is this mm-hmm. like no you have like a contract and you've got to come back next year I don't know the inner workings I can't imagine that Ferentz is going to base his decision on whether or not Cade McNamara decides No I'm saying to is if 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 it's going to be for a new head coach, does Cade McNamara already announce in October that he's coming back and make it official like this? Does he have any other choice? I mean, can he go anywhere else at this point and not sit out a year? I mean, if good, I'm him, I'm doing question. the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm probably just coming back, and no matter who the the coach is going to be, I mean, you're definitely the best quarterback, um, the best option if if you can get that leg healed again. Um, I, I, it's a big nothing burger to me because we already knew this and I, I really don't think it's going to affect Kirk Ferentz and his decision. And I, I have no idea what that decision is going to be. Like, I, it's going to be wild once we get into oh, December, December and in January to see what actually happens with Kirk Ferentz. And I think that that's all you need to look at as far as what happens with Brian. Because... Yeah, and then you've got the interim AD, what happens there. Like, there's just a lot of moving pieces to this. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Anyways, okay, so that's that's happening. Uh, we do have an Iowa State game. Cyclones are, are back. Uh, they are really a great opportunity, Chris, going to Baylor. I have a lot of thoughts on Baylor, but uh, let's let's spend some more time on Iowa State to start this opportunity to go four and one in Big Twelve play, and then you start to look ahead and you can play this what I think is a dangerous game, and I'll tell you why. But you can look ahead to Kansas at home, 
BYU on the road, and you can start penciling in wins, which is, again, very dangerous Mm -hmm. in my opinion. But the imagination, if you win this weekend, can really start to go wild. Imagination runs wild. (laughs) Right? You've been there? Well, that – You've That's actually before. what I, I'm changing my kitchen refresh to. It, oh, is that, okay. It is that exact thing. Why don't you pop up the old no pros kitchen refresh? It stands okay. for no kitchen refresh at Hassel's house in South Florida. Kitchenrefreshiowa.com. They do a great job. They've already come in and they've done the measuring at my house. They're going to save me thou- tens of thousands of dollars. I don't want to buy new cabinets. I'm just going to have them refresh my kitchen, baby. Must be nice. So my kitchen refresh is this is a swing game this week. You win this game, and all of a sudden, anything's possible because you're four and one in Big 12 play. We saw how close they were last week to being tied for first with Oklahoma almost going down to to UCF. You win this game, and all of a sudden, you can start entertaining the idea of – Big time November games that have Big 12 championship implications. Because you have Kansas coming in after this, a game I think Iowa State should win. And then you go to a BYU team. That's going to be tough, but that is that is a game that's potentially winnable. Your huge games, your the games that I don't think Iowa State are, are, is going to win, come at the very end of the year. So you can have a ton of fun, and then all of a sudden those games could end up being for a spot in the Big Ten, uh, Big Twelve championship game. And that's what you, uh, that's what we get into this for, right? I mean, that's what fans are. You, mm-hmm. you want to see your team, especially the Texas thing. Blue made a good point to me earlier this week when we were talking about it. Like we kind of want Texas to win out. We don't want Texas. Everybody in the Big Twelve wants Texas to lose, but I, I kind of want them. I want them to have a real shot at the playoff when they come to Ames in the middle of November. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tricky spot for Texas. I think they're. I, I've been pretty public. I think that Texas and Oklahoma are a lot better than everybody else. Although I will say, I, I think Kansas State has turned a bit of a corner. Where yes, they have with the new quarterback. That's yeah. um. I think they, they, they look a, every bit like the team that was picked second now in the Correct. Columns. So we we have to evolve that opinion just a little bit, but you you factor in what's the date on that map? November the sixteenth in Ames or November the eighteenth in Ames. It could be it could be anywhere from fifty degrees to snowing and twenty. You guys know how Iowa weather is. Mm-hmm. You start to look ahead to that one, and and I I want Texas to have one loss on its resume that Red River shootout game to Oklahoma. I want them thinking playoff when they come to that one because you're probably going to get a you know an ABC night game or you know something like that a really big time or maybe a Fox game maybe your big noon it's possible I don't I don't know what else is going on that weekend around the country but that would be really really cool so. Here, here's my thing going into Baylor. I actually think, and I was dead wrong, okay? I was dead wrong on Baylor. This is one of the biggest whiffs I've ever had in my career. I thought that this team, remember we had these conversations. If it's not Texas or Oklahoma, who could sneak mm-hmm. into? And I thought Baylor, I had them circled as like my flyer in the Big 12 just because I think Dave Aranda's a really good coach. I like their mm-hmm. offensive coordinator, Grimes. Uh, I really like Blake Shave in the quarterback. Well, he gets hurt. And what, what kind of happened here, Chris, is they had a bunch of transfers, new guys, and it it's taken them a while. And these guys are finally starting to produce a little bit. Now, I will say, when you watch their tape from last week's game against Cincinnati, the same team, Iowa State, really dominated for four quarters. It was never really in doubt. You know, Baylor, it was in doubt at the end of that game. They had a big lead. Cincinnati makes a comeback. But you can still see, like, the talent on this Baylor team. And I'm just hesitant, Chris, because I I, I truly do believe that 3 through 12 or 4, I don't even know how many teams are in the Big 12, 14, whatever. (laughs) 
three through 14, like, I don't think there's much of a difference in any of these teams. I mean, so that's like, what we're seeing right now in the standings. I mean, it, yeah. it's so jumbled up. I mean, look at all the teams that that have a chance halfway through the conference season. And Iowa State's one of them. I mean, look at Oklahoma State. That, they're only lost in conferences to Iowa State. Yeah, and they've they've kind of come on. Gundy's done a hell of a job to turn that Jeez, thing. Your he, voice is oh, an absolute shot. mess. <clears throat> your voice shot. is worse than my setup today. <laughs> I'm, I'm having to use my phone and my ear pods. I don't know if I got fired or what, but I can't log in to my email on my phone. I can't log into my work computer. I, I'm a mess. But your voice Are sounds you even worse. I'm concerned with my with with my password yeah i'm worried that like <laughs> i'm it... worried that i missed those emails that said like you must reset your password in this amount of time is it because he showed up wearing this to work maybe i That's don't know what i was wondering <laughs> um explain yourself is, uh, okay so that was not my idea those overalls actually belong to a producer of ours named jack who's about 30 years old he wears those he brought those in because our social media guy wanted to do for NBA opening night these NBA walk-ins. You know how they, they walk in wearing outrageous outfits and carrying oh, purses yeah. and all that. <laughs> so he did a video and I and I just I just so happened to be wearing overalls again like Couture. So I I got some people excited even though there's really there's no Couture coming. I'm sorry. That's a when does that piece come out? Has it already come out? Uh, I, I think they posted it on the socials yesterday. I, I did. I haven't retweeted it, but it's out there somewhere. You kind of got a big ass. You know that? Yeah, let's let's look at that again. Let's let's break down the tape, Van Wink. Can we break down the tape on uh, my body? I'm just saying you, some body your ass sharing? is kind of big in those. Yeah, well, I have, I have the, the big... Um, I I I have big thighs, big ass. Um my dad calls it the Bushma ass, which is my mom's maiden name. And here's the video. There's the starter vibe, there's the trendsetter, those are our morning guys, Brandon and Zach. There's Jacqueline with the retro feel. There's me, they gave me some kind of weird <laughs> fanny pack. Supreme fanny pack. And uh, uh Amanda was in there right after me, I think as the uh there she is, the superstar, holding up the sign that says, <laughs> trade me. <laughs> oh, and then I, I appear at the end of this thing with an Iowa thing on because they wanted me to channel my inner Austin Reeves, who I guess just wears like a hoodie and oh, doesn't yeah. do anything. There it is. Look at it. I, I kind of look like a Hawkeye basketball player, don't I? Oh, oh, no, oh now I mean, all these... Uh, kind of like Kyle Korver look. Now I'm being yeah. ashamed. Uh, now I'm being accused of body shaming you. Isaac says you have a Spencer Petrus ass. Yeah, oh, you have a big dump truck ass. See, I can't see the comments today, so you're going to have to keep me abreast. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you in the loop with of the, the situation. Uh, I'll keep you in the loop with the good ones. Yeah, that's just my thing. Like, I, So I, I feel like Iowa State fans are really confident going into this game, and, and, I, and they have all the right to be. I think they'll beat Baylor. I really do. Like, I think they're better than Baylor. But I also... I just am really leery because I'm watching all these other Big 12 games and I've seen how unpredictable the conference is. And I just – I don't think Iowa State has proven that it's immune from that. You know, like this is basically a pick em in Waco against a team that came off its bye, looked a lot better. It made a lot of changes. And I also like there's, – there's part of me where I'm just a little concerned because Iowa State's coming off of its bye – and they had all this momentum where I, I, I don't know if the buy came at a, at a great time. I guess we'll see. But that that's a part of me, too. Or it's just well, like Matt Campbell's trying to scare his kids into thinking that 70% of teams coming off buys lose the following week. Did you hear him say that? Yeah. Is, is that real? Like, is that an no. actual? Okay. No, it is not. Um, I, I don't know the exact number. I think Connor... Ferguson from Cyclone Fanatic just did a quick little look and just recently it's like 
somewhere around 52, 53 percent. I mean, it's not I don't even know that it's mathematically possible for 70 percent of teams, power five teams to lose off a, a buy, because a lot of times you're also playing a team coming off a buy. Like Alabama, LSU. Yeah. You know, in a lot of conferences before the big games, they have their big teams have bye weeks right before that game. So I, I don't know if he just made it up to try to get, you know, get something extra out of the kids Matt or if he really that. thought that was true. Matt would not use a press conference to do something like that. No way. Do you remember? I, I don't know if, remember when Dave Beatty was still at Kansas? They had lost like 20 games in a row. And Matt went out there and like, man, this is a really good team. This is a great team. team. I this mean, is this a, team, I, they are really tapping into something special down there in Lawrence. And then Iowa he State said the same like thing about, nothing. about Baylor. He's like, well, they're, they're just like us, young team, just playing great football right now. Like, not, not really. They beat Cincinnati, right? And they had a miracle win at UCF, which still hasn't won a game. Yeah. This is still the team that lost to Texas State to start the year. Correct. They can't they can't run it and they can't stop the run. That's their MO. They 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 will this is a strength on strength matchup. So I'm fully anticipating Blake Shapin, who I think is really good. I think he I think he's a really good quarterback. And there's a reason why they suck so much when he was out, because he's way better than the next guy. But he'll he'll throw it forty to fifty times. Will be my projection. How, how bad was your voice yesterday and Tuesday? Uh, it wasn't bad at all. The last if it's two this days. bad right now, I wonder if I'm getting sick. Oh no! But we because we drove through in the middle of the night. Matt even winks. Come on, we we didn't leave downtown Minneapolis until what eleven? It, it took us an hour just to get you, out. of You there. guys drove home after the game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. What? Why what time I went to bed at four and got up at six. Uh, we got on, we rolled in back around two thirty. I didn't get to bed until probably three. Why why would you do that to yourselves? Why would we you get a hotel? Room? Two, it was after two thirty. It was three when we rolled in, yeah. brother. Yeah. I I went to bed right away. See, I went to bed around three. I, I had the same thing yesterday. My voice was completely shot. We were we were having fun. This was a great atmosphere though, man. US Bank Stadium does it right. Yeah, I have not the been pregame. There yet. It, it seems like a great place to watch a game. It is. How they, come? Uh, how come you guys didn't get on the field? But uh, it looked like uh, old girl got on the field before the game. Brooke and Steph. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't. Um, I don't have the contacts like she does. Apparently, they got some hookups. <laughs> yeah, it's too I bad. It was cool, those. man. There was like Kurt, Kurt, Warner, Kurt Warner was down there. Uh, Dallas Clark was on the field before the game. They had all the stars out. Oh, I don't yeah. know what it is. Zoom into Williams on this picture. Uh, I, hang on. I, I don't know what it is, if, if it's him or if it's just like the jersey, but you, it looks like you have just a humongous upper body and just tiny <laughs> little peg legs. Look at that. Just a big I'm, round upper body. I might. <laughs> and just the little peg legs down there. Uh, it doesn't help that I'm standing next to Carper either. He's yeah, like this, that's true. You know, he's like a American gladiator type. No, like we met a lot of Iowa everywhere fans, a lot of guys that listen to the show. It was crazy hassle. Like I it's hard to explain how many Iowa State jer- like shirts and jerseys and like we're there and matt even on the way up yeah so we had the cyclone fanatic truck so we were right Mm -hmm. people knew who we were but we were getting passed by iowa state plates like the Mm -hmm. whole way or passing it like it was absolutely crazy there's this little area out there where they have like concerts and a beer garden before the game i mean how many people stopped up and you know, either recognizes from the show 20, or 20 just probably. Iowa State fans. It was, it was. I felt like I was at an Iowa State bowl game. Hmm. Was the feeling that I had up there? Listen to this guy. So we to, uh... we met this guy. 
who's Outside a diehard Hawkeye fan. And we bumped into a huge Iowa Everywhere fan. He's wearing a George Kittle jersey, and he has one message for Chris Hassel. Hassel, I need you to stay negative. No positivity on the Hawks. Stay negative. It doesn't work. No more, Hassel. None of this rose-colored glasses bullshit. Stay negative. Absolutely. <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to say something about a placenta. No, he's going to uh, say something about Fairway, our, our sponsor, Fairway. Shop Fairway. We what? did get a handful of placenta <laughs> comments. We did. Around that time. Yeah, I made a big mistake last week just going positive on Iowa, just thinking that this thing was going to work. You know, well, as long as it works, fine. That's just not – that's not me. I, I let – I think I let the team down because usually the more negative I am, the better they are. So no more of that shit. It's negative Nancy from here on out, which won't be hard to do. That was funny because that guy, he was he, he was really cool, comes up, introduces himself. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll let you hang out with your friends. Just one of the – will you just do me a favor and, and tell Hassel like, – and he's telling me about how big of an Iowa fan he is and, like, he's – listing out his credentials and it's a big Iowa fan. He's like, God, he's got to stay negative. He goes, I can't handle it. I can't handle it the other way. I'm like, well, why don't you tell him? So we started up the camera. Nice. That looked like a great time. I was jealous. Do you have a prediction for what on Iowa state before we move on? I want to hear your prediction first. Yeah. I'm going to, let's go. Iowa state 31, 24. 31-21, 31-21, right in that area. I think Iowa oh, State no. handles them, but I think it's a fourth. I think it's a four-quarter game. Weird things happen in Waco. I just got a DM from Copley. Jesus Christ, did you just refer to me as old girl? No, old girl. <laughs> OL, old girl, not old girl. I'm sure you're a lot younger than me. I don't know how old she is. I would guess she's like 30. three, four years younger, two, three years younger than us. That's it. Uh, not much. Uh, so for my prediction, I think Iowa State's the better team. I know it's in Waco, and weird stuff has happened down there. It's a you, weird place. You, you've seen it over the years. Yeah. Um, I was I'm, listening to Firmly Entrenched, and I think that the note was they've they've won once down there since 04. Yeah, in 2017. <clears throat> that was the David Montgomery year. And it was a and, grinder of a game. They're, they actually – the bus – got stuck in traffic and they had to delay kickoff a little bit because Iowa state got there so late because there's no hotels in Waco. Have you ever called a game there? No, no, I haven't been. Yeah. I mean, there's like one big hotel and that's where the Baylor team stays. So the other team has to basically stay in like this motel, like 45 <laughs> I'm Tom minutes Bodette away. And I'll leave the light on for you and the rest of your team. Uh, I'm going to go Iowa State wins and covers. What's the line at? Iowa State now two and a half point favorite. Open as an underdog. All the money's on Iowa State, which is Open a little bit as terrifying. A dog? Really? Yeah. It flipped completely. Didn't they open as a two and a half point dog and now they're a two and a half point favorite? It depended on the book. The book that we trust was that was not the case, but other books, yeah, Iowa State, it, it's completely flipped. It's been a really weird. And, uh, what's interesting about this is all of the power ratings, like Connolly, like all the trusted ones, have Iowa State winning this game by over a touchdown. Really? Yeah. I mean, look. but the books don't. The books have it a lot closer than that. Well, I think that uh, the books factor in, obviously, the public and what the public thinks. And I think the public is going to still see Baylor as the better program. They're at home. Iowa State's overall record isn't great because of the two non-conference losses. I I, th- I think the right team is favored here, and I do agree with you that they're they're about a touchdown better. I'm going to go Iowa State 27-20. All right. So we were right in the same boat right there, yeah. Uh, 47 and a half is the current number via Circa. So we'll uh... – Have they announced the game time for the, the Kansas – no, yeah. it got six dayed. Okay, and it's probably because they're waiting to see if one, if Iowa State wins this game, two, if Kansas were to upset Oklahoma this week, 
and there is World Series implications, I guess, with Fox. So, like, they had the World Oh, God. That's Jamie right. Pollard talked about it on Tuesday night on the Iowa State Coaches Show. Now, he did hint that Iowa State is pushing, and I don't know how Iowa State can really control this, but this is coming from Pollard, so it's worthy. He said they are pushing to get a night game. They really want that to be a night game. The Kansas game? Yeah. Well, how does the World Series play into that? I don't they're know. Not gonna, if, well, if there's a World Series game that day, it's going to be a night game. It's always a night game. Correct. But the, you've got, you know, like with, with Fox and ESPN, you, there, you, there's a million networks that they can move move things around. I don't know. I don't know how Iowa State can tell the networks we want to be – like that doesn't make sense to me. But Listen here. I, you, <laughs> you, you, you got your World Series. We don't give a crap. It, it, it's it's the Diamondbacks and the Rangers. Let me ask you this. Shit. Who would draw a better TV number? The Diamondbacks and the Rangers on a Saturday night of college football season or Iowa State, Kansas? Well, is it a it is, is it a regular season game or a World Series game? The World Series game. But the, the World Series is still going to outdraw. It, I was joking, Iowa but State you games. get my point. That, that Saturday cares. would be game seven, so it's like – TBD, oh, if that's even so. November 4th would be game seven, so that's so why it's Pollard, TBD. Pollard is going to Major League Baseball and saying, okay, let's get this thing over before game seven, all right? Like, if we need to make calls, let's, ma- let's make some calls so that whoever's up in this series ends up winning it because we can't go back for a game seven. I think Because that will force Iowa State into a day game. My prediction, Rangers sweep. We have no this. That's the no first one. That might be the first anymore. baseball talk on two guys named Chris ever. The first and only. How about, I mean, Luke is being a douche on YouTube right now. So yeah. I, I kind of went on a rant yesterday with Bloom warning Iowa State fans to not ask me about what freaking channel the game is on because it's on ESPN. Plus. Oh, no. Well, who are, the, it, who are the announcers? Have you seen who the announcers are? Uh, we had him yesterday. Van Wink, Maddie look up. Can... See who's calling the game. Luke says this. He's just trolling me. He goes, hey, Williams, I just checked my TV guide. I couldn't find the Iowa State game listed. What channel is the game on, God damn it! I, I will not answer that question to people on Twitter and Facebook now. Ten years ago, it was acceptable to ask me what channel the game is on. Google it. There's Remember, a million different places where you can find the damn. Don't bother me with it. Williams, what was it? Was it like the first game that was on Cyclones.tv? Oh and it was a total disaster. Like the the people couldn't figure it out. And like sometimes it was like going in and out. So even when they did figure it out, they got in and there was nothing there. And I went on Twitter and I, what, what did I say? Cause I, and I, cause I got every get a hold of you. Said, <laughs> hey. It's like, Hey, I remember that now. Uh, Such a if dick. you're, if you're having issues finding the Iowa state game, Chris Williams has the answer. Just send him a message and he will send you the link to be able to watch this game. And you just got bombarded. I had forgotten all about that. God, that was like 10 years ago. You were ago. so pissed that I did that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too because they were totally screwed. They, It had something to do – Tyler Ruthford, who was in charge, told me all about this one time where it really – they didn't do anything wrong locally. It was somewhere where their like server or whoever was pushing out the feed was located in like Atlanta – and there were so many more people that logged onto that game than they were prepared for. And like, I felt terrible. The people in Ames were just like, you know, can we, what can we do about this? And everybody was just losing their goddamn mind on Twitter. Has ESPN plus and the big 12 coverage gotten any better? A little bit, but it's not. I've what? seen, I've seen it the last couple of years and it's just, it's, it's disappointing because it it the, feels the very much. The picture looks fine. Yeah, but they just—it's just very, very clear that resources are spread so thin that none of those resources get down to the streaming level. I I can live with the dumbed down feed or whatever, 
the problem I have with it is the replay. Oh, it's bad. It's really like, bad. You you, you can't well, it, like for the, the refs. And one of the mainly. reasons for that is that they only have like for these kind of games usually for the streaming level, they only have it four or five cameras instead of a, a a major broadcast that would have, I mean your biggest broadcast will have 60 cameras um a usual broadcast on let's just say uh espn or fs1 we're talking maybe 15 cameras you go down to the streaming level and we're talking six cameras so and, and everything is limited everything the the the, pe- the amount of people in the truck what they can do and oftentimes even the level of the people who are on the games it appears to be mark neely he's not okay. bad no uh, barrett brooks i don't know who barrett brooks don't know is. who that is tory petty on the sideline thank you matt yeah i don't know that i know mark neely he's done games forever and does a good yeah, job really but good. I, I don't know the rest of that crew i i hope it's better i i really do but godspeed yes yeah, so that's a that's a 230 kick for Iowa State. We both have Iowa State winning. Uh, let's thank a few of our great sponsors. We already kitchenrefreshiowa.com. Hassel gave his opinion on the Cyclones my, listen, earlier. My dad's getting real fed up that we're adding all these sponsors. Real fed up. He says the whole well, show sorry, Don. has just consisted, is, is now just sponsors and us thanking the sponsors. And William's getting free shit done at his house. He's tired of it. Hey, Don, you know what? You can click off. You don't have to watch. Can I do this now? Yeah, go ahead. Wanna... Hey, Van Wink, <laughs> why don't you stick that pole up your ass, see how far it gets in there? Uh, we've got coming up at the Iowa Events Center, we've got Adam Sandler on November the 13th, Old Dominion, December the 7th. WWE Monday Night Raw, December the 18th. Kane Brown, April the 18th. Kane Brown. And I just saw Cody Johnson got a date as well. I just saw that yesterday. Uh, I'm going to want to definitely try and get to that one. He's an old rodeo guy, Cody Johnson. That's a hell of a show. I don't know Cody Johnson. but I. They got Shania Twain coming up, Matty. Is that what I see right there? Wow, look at that. I went to her concert a couple of years ago when she was in town, and it was freaking awesome. You think my voice is bad now? You should have heard me the day after the Shania Twain concert when I was up yelling. Fantastic. I I just have Kane Brown in my head now. Did did you call Kane Brown douche country as you were doing this, this promo for Iowa Event Center last show? I think you did. I said he's pseudo douche. But I think that's what our sponsors like at Iowa Everywhere. They like that we're honest. They like that I'm pissed off that I'm not getting a, a, a new kitchen like you are. I'm they not like getting a new kitchen. Off. I'm getting a kitchen refresh. There's okay, a difference. Okay, you're getting a refurbished kitchen from Kitchen Refresh, which is basically like new. And they like that, that you shit all over Kane Brown because you think he's douche country. Now, I think that's just racist, but I, I, I like the guy. <laughs> Why do you have to take it there? Uh, Ross says Mike Williams over Donald Hassel. Oh, geez. Don is now saying goodbye, fool. Your dad's out. He's no longer watching the program. Yeah, right. No chance. Just like I, I can't tell you how many times in my life my dad has said, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this team. I'm done with this program. Whether he's talking about Iowa football, Iowa basketball, the Bears. He always crawls back. He's not leaving us. He's addicted no. to us. He is. Uh, let's do a cheers to the freaking weekend. We'll get oh. into some other college football topics presented by our friends at Steeple Ridge Bourbon. Hey, new CW pod coming out mm-hmm. today, I believe at noon. I interviewed a paranormal investigator. It's my annual Halloween special. I've been doing this for a lot. Ross and I used to always have these paranormal investigators on our KXNO show, to which I would have to tell Ross beforehand, hey, be nice. These are nice people. Like, don't be a jerk to these people and make fun of them. And You're I'm talking ask, about them like they're mentally handicapped. 
No. Well, this this is Ross. Like, you know Ross. You never know what's going to come out of that guy's mouth. So they come into the studio, and they'd be telling their stories, and Ross is over there, like, smirking. And I'm like, be nice. You be nice. And Didn't that's what you I tell to me you. that you, on this CW pod, that this person was telling a story about how he was, like, possessed in his she, ass while he was giving someone else a tour? Listen to this story. And she's phenomenal. She's been doing this for, like, 15 years. Towards a woman? Yeah, really nice lady. She is, uh, her name is Katie Hopkins. She's super, super sweet. She's got five kids. She's got. Is she in Des Moines? No, she's over in near Benton County. I don't know exactly what. Where's Benton County to Muscatine? It's got to be really close, I would think. That's like Cedar Rapids area. Okay. Well, anyways, I met her through a friend, uh, Matt. You know Jeremiah Davis, old sports writer. He introduced me to Katie because they're friends. So is this Jeremiah is Jeremiah a big row. ghost guy too? Because I know Jeremiah. No. He, he he's not, but he okay. just knows Katie, and he he thought it'd be a good contact. But she came on, and she was telling me a story yesterday that they did a ghost hunt with Tim Dwight. So Tim Dwight, this is crazy. We're it. She never told me this before yesterday. So I asked her, like, do you believe basically that people can that people can become possessed? Which means, like, do you believe that, like, a ghost can, like, basically take over a human's body or whatever? And she was explaining to me that she doesn't really believe that, but then, like, things can happen. She was talking to me about how when she was investigating the Farrar Elementary School with Tim Dwight, it was her and Tim Dwight in a room where she believes that a ghost, like, took over her body for him, and she wanted to kill Tim Dwight. <laughs> it's fantastic. I just love yeah. the Tim Dwight tie. Don't be a dick. Don't roll your eyes. Open your mind, dude. You've been you've lived such a sheltered life. You're there. Okay, your, so why your wife's setting out your your clothes for you? Your wife's going on a trip. Oh, I made I made dinner. They're in freezer bags for you, Christopher. Like if open your was- eyes, man. If she was possessed and she, she wasn't wanted to possessed, kill Tim she Dwight. She was taken over. There's a difference. Okay. okay. If she was taken over and she wanted to kill Tim Dwight, why didn't she attempt to do it? Because she's an experienced paranormal investigator and she was able to ground herself. So like somebody no inexperienced like me, if I Wouldn't was there, know what's I'm happening. So I'm, I would try to kill Tim Dwight. Maybe. You, you have to. Guy, I'm telling you guys. You have to watch this or and listen because she – and I did one with her last year before I had moved CW Pod over to I, Iowa Everywhere. And we went like an hour and a half last year, and she is – she's not a crazy human. Like, she's a totally rational, like, really awesome gal. You and sound you, like the Seinfeld episode where Kramer's trying to convince everyone that Lloyd Braun is crazy. <laughs> Not crazy. Just because I know you, and I know you're going to be a dick about it because you're a skeptic. You're going to be well, an asshole. I think it's pretty common knowledge that if you if you think that someone possessed you or took over your body and was trying to make you kill Tim Dwight, you're crazy. Okay? <laughs> Period. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's probably not. Nice okay, so here's what's next. Okay. Most of the time until she wants to kill somebody. We are going to go, and she is going to take us on an investigation. Van Winkle is going to be running I the don't, camera. Williams, I, I don't want any part of this. Because, yeah, because you know it's real. This well, is what, what all happens? of you skeptics do. All of you guys talk shit, and then I say, okay, fine, come with me. And you're like, no, so, no, no, so, so I'm not doing me, that. You're telling me, okay, best case scenario, this is all real, right? Worst case scenario, we go on this ghost hunt for nothing, and no, nothing happens. Best case scenario, it's real. And if that's the case... And then someone crawls inside me and possesses me and wants me to go like kill kill somebody, <laughs> and I'm not experienced, so I can't fend that off like but an experienced person can. Then I end why, up in jail, and someone ends up dead. Why that's would I? Why do you this? go with an experienced professional Williams, like Katie? It's lose lose. It's a lose lose situation. I'm sorry. Maybe we could get Tim Dwight to go with us because he's clearly into these things. 
If I'm Tim Dwight, I'm never going around that girl again. No, they they. If they someone tells me, you know what, I when we went to this place, I was possessed, and I I wanted to kill you. I would <laughs> never want to be around that person again. In fact, I'd probably go to law enforcement and get a restraining order because that's messed up. Matt, are you prepared to run the camera when we do this? I'm in. Okay. Because I, I was talking you up. I said I have a world-class videographer. Is it me yeah. or is, I'm not is, scared. Matt, is Matt Van Winkle just getting better looking by the, by the day? Look at him. He's got that great eye everywhere hat on. He's got a beard that's so perfect it looks like it's painted on. His chin looks Thank chiseled. You. Thank you. That's the ni- that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You look amazing, doesn't well, he, you. Williams? Yeah, I think it looks very good. I got the light on today. Does that help? Maybe that's helping. it. Does help? It does help. Wow. All right, so that's coming up on the CW Pod. I believe it. I believe it's going to be posted. Jesus, Williams, noon. your voice is out of control. I, I fear I'm getting sick. You know what? I fear I'm getting sick. My wife is in the other room right now, sicker than a goddamn possessed dog. Does she got the COVID? I, I don't know what it is, but she has been in bed for 24 hours, coughing like crazy, just hacking. She's got the COVID. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. She blames it on. She went to Chicago this last weekend and visited her cousin who has a baby. And you know how these damn kids are; they're always sick. She thinks that damn baby got her sick. Carper's kid had a runny nose, Matt. The whole trip, I'm, I'm guessing. Snot nose kids. Him. Hey, what's going on this weekend with uh, the Amish glider? Does does that travel for road games? Uh, no, but it's funny you asked. I have an Amish story for you. Really? So. Uh, uh, guys, tell me in the comments here. Does it, does everybody else have a fly problem this year? Yes. Is it me or are the flies considerably worse than normal in the state of Iowa? There's flies everywhere in our house. So, you know, that's one thing that I noticed when I moved away from Iowa is like, I never see flies. Iowa must be the fly capital of the goddamn world. Because I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a fly in Florida. Well, everybody is responding, yes, that there's flies everywhere they're ho- in their house. And you have those damn Asian beetles. Anyway, what, what, how, do, how are so, you going to tie this in with the Amish? Well, listen up, my friend. <laughs> so my wife says i'm gonna order some fly swatters on amazon okay go for it she ordered she opted for amish leather fly swatters over like cheap plastic or cheap plastic ones so we get these amish fly swatters in the mail and they smell like shit We pull them out. We we cannot even put these fly swatters in our house. They have to stay in the garage because they smell so horrible. What? what? So the leather smells bad, or yes. are they made of something else? Are they I don't know, of- but it's almost like the Amish like killed a cow, took it, and made you know, created the leather for these flies. It is the most disgusting smell. I cannot describe it. Oh, you need to you need to get these to bloom. Get these to bloom. Put a little we will decal on them, and it's the we will Amish fly swatter. The we will Amish shit smell fly swatter. <laughs> what are the differences there? It's, I mean, it's just I don't I don't really get it. What what is so what? I mean, if if you hit it, you hit it and kill it. What why does it? satisfying smush <laughs> <laughs> but like the 
the the like handle is leather on on our Amish fly swatter too. It's not just the slap part. We got three of them. But like, why would you be like, of all the things in the world that I'm gonna splurge on and spend three times as much money? Why would you do it for a fly swatter? Like, well, the Amish made it. This is gonna be great. We're going to kill so many more flies now. Let's opt for I mean, the I, Amish one. I guess maybe you think the Amish probably have major fly problems. So they, they be should true. know about you know how to get rid of flies. But a swatter is a swatter. If you hit it, you hit it. Now, I, I got sent uh, another. It, it appears to be there is there is an Amish glider knockoff floating around on the internet. Uh, someone sent this to me, Andrew. <laughs> there, Someone is selling this Iowa State bench for wow. $420. Oh, Look at that no, thing. Andrew's right. You got to go with the Amish bench over that. Look at that. Look at how bad that thing is. That's a piece of sell- junk. Oh, my God. That looks like a little kid's toy that you'd get at Walmart for 15 bucks. That that makes the Amish one look like I mean they could probably charge if someone's going going to buy that for 420, you could charge 20,000 for the Amish glider. You'd think. <laughs> but what what is up with these people setting prices for Iowa State benches? Because they're t- the, the prices are 10 to 20 times higher than they should be. Let's do our uh, cheers to the freaking weekend. You are no, heading we where? That. No, you, we didn't give our actual cheers. Where are you headed okay. this week? Guess. Guess. Do you know? You really don't know? You t- don't are you going to Utah? Nope. Mm. I don't think you've told us, honestly. Going to the Rose Bowl. Oh. UCLA is hosting Colorado. It's not the greatest game of the week, but it's sold out. UCLA is wearing throwback uniforms from when they won the national title 70 years ago. Dion's in town coming off a bye week and that t- blown 29 point lead to Stanford. It's a uh, 430 local time kick. So it's kind of around the time that the Rose Bowl kicks off. It'll, it'll kind of have that feel. It'll be light out when the game begins, and then the sun goes down. Got the mountains in the background. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Rose – I've never been. Looking forward to seeing the, the Rose Bowl, and it's sold out, which is really rare for UCLA. Yeah, that never happens. Colorado needs this, too, if they want to get to a bowl game. They're running oh, out of yeah. chances. Well, yeah. I guess they got Arizona, Washington State, but, man. They have to win two more games, and I think uh, – all but one team. Arizona is the only team left on their schedule that is not ranked right now. UCLA is is pretty good, so I don't. I think they're favored by like seventeen. I don't see that Colorado they win got happening. Washington yet. State. I don't think they're ranked anymore. They have Washington State as well. Yep. Colorado. I'll do a cheers to uh, Maddie Van Winks and the Bondurant. So Bondurant, you'll you'll appreciate this. We don't do beggars night. We oh, don't participate yes. in. We don't participate in that. Garbage. Good for you. That's such a ridiculous, Des Moines, stupid tradition. What are you talking about? Bondurant does do Beggar's Night. No, they don't. <laughs> not anymore. It's on Saturday. It's not what it's called, Matt. Oh, oh what do they call it? Quit spreading fake news. <laughs> what is it's it? not on Halloween. Bondurant came out and basically made like a city law that we will trick-or-treat the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Yes. The Saturday, That's what you want everybody what do you to mean, be able to stay out late, drink. Yes. You know, you want to stay out until eleven o'clock with, in your driveway, drinking a what is, what, steeple what ridge, said, acting like he's all pissed the, off. You said the Saturday before. Problem? You said the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Or the Halloween. Saturday before. You know what I meant, <laughs> Matt? Jesus, God, you two man. shoes, man. Over. Here. I don't like the rule because it interferes with college football. Don't don't uh, mess with my Saturday. That's true. Ben Wink makes a pretty good point there. Well, it's not great for me because I'll be doing post game when Iowa State is um, finishing up, or where I'll, Iowa State will be finishing up when all this starts. But it's a, it's such a badass um, 
deal because like the whole town, like we all just have fire pits and just drink until like midnight. Don't you do that every weekend though? Yeah, but it's nice when everybody's dressed up. You know what I mean? What is dressed up? Look at oh, you mean like dressed up in costumes? Yeah. Are you really gonna wear a costume? I wear a costume every year. What? I'm gonna be a Ghostbuster, and then Elise is gonna be a ghost. Oh, I, I haven't. I, like I stopped trick or I was one of those kids that I figured out Santa Claus wasn't real when I was in second grade, and I decided Dude. that I was. I was what? You don't say that out loud. We don't know Sorry. that he's not real. <laughs> Sorry. You I, are such a curmudgeon. Santa Claus is real, kids. If you were listening, well, listen. I lived this, in an a we lived in an apartment complex. Okay, there's no chimney, so I start asking my my mom, my dad, like, how does well? Oh, Santa's got a key. He's got a key for our apartment, and he comes in and like, give me a break. Come on, this is, this is phony baloney. Yeah, my daughter's four, and we have a, a glass, you know, covering on our gas fireplace and he's like how does santa get through the gas mm -hmm. you see this is uh, your smart kids will, will see through this and i decided in third grade i was too not old true. to trick or treat he is in real. third grade williams i decided is i was too old to trick or treat well you missed out on and, a lot and of good dress times, up <laughs> shane says someone needs to dress up as a placenta <laughs> how about the guy that dressed up as the the, the the cock and balls at the football game last night yeah, so we got this. Connor Ferguson sent us this. Uh, these Sam Houston games, they need to stop doing these midweek games. There's always something bad that happens to Sam Houston. If it's like videos of like no crowd at their games. Last night, this guy dressed up as a penis with testicles at the game. You can kind of see it right there. Look at those giant balls. Why is that guy holding his hand? <laughs> The best part of it is watching all the people's reaction as the cock and balls walk by and the Grim Reapers right behind the guy's <laughs> taint. And the guy who's escorting him out, he's probably like a marketing intern, is like laughing the whole time. Is So you think he's getting kicked out of the stadium? Yeah, because the cock and balls outfit, I believe. Interesting. I thought maybe it was his friend like helping him to the concession stand. Maybe. I thought he was getting kicked out. Being, yeah, well, why don't you go? Uh, we, we we've got a disturbance down in the student section. There's someone's dressed up as a phallic and balls. What? Why don't you go grab his hand and escort him out of the building? <laughs> Let's right, do did our. You, did, did we cheers yet? Oh my! Yeah, we yeah we got the cheers done. Well, I I, I didn't I, so. I didn't do a cheers. Do you do your cheers? God, what am I going to cheers to? My wife is sick. Now we don't get to go out to my favorite restaurant to eat tonight. And it's, dinner's going to be all on me again, like last night, when I had to order pizza from work and come home and eat it cold. Tonight, who knows what we're going to do. Um, I've got to fly cross country in coach. What am I going to cheers to? What, oh, I, I guess. Coach? Yeah. You I, I don't direct? know. What, no, I've got to fly through Atlanta and I'm in, I'm in coach. I didn't even get Delta comfort. I don't know what the hell's going on. How about cheers to not having to watch Iowa in the Rose bowl? That's uh, a good one. Dan Wink. That's uh, I'll just cheers to, to see in the Rose bowl. Yes. There you go. Not, not having to see Iowa play. Cause every time they go, it just something horrible happens. So yeah, looking forward to seeing the Rose Bowl. That's my uh, that's my cheers for the weekend. It's going to be crazy though because all these LA people are going to be coming in to see Dion. So the sidelines are going to be just a shit show. I'm going to try to stay down there as long as I can to see see who all is down there and who all uh, is coming out to the game. Big stars, I bet. All right, let's do our top three games of the weekend. We are, we are not. We don't have our circa millions done yet. Just a heads up to everybody. We will. We've get given it. up because we lost Survivor. We've, we've kind of given up on everything. I have not given up. Fine, you can get out. Where I'm, we, we can still win money here. 
No, I, I'm just saying you. I, I sent you my picks. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard a goddamn thing from you. Yes, you did. I responded that I liked two of them. Yeah, but you didn't send me anything you liked. That's because I'm honestly I'm behind because I got back at three thirty in the morning. I'm just like everything do, is pushed back. Do you know how to get around text message issues when you're switching phones? Because I have missed so many. You said you sent me texts that I never got. Yeah. And it was it happened the night that I switched phones. I got a new phone. And so then there was this like two hour period where the phones are like connecting as one. And Oh, the syncing? Yeah. And so I've got people it's like, like oh, when a ghost my, takes my, over your body. <laughs> my dad was like, What are you not responding to my text messages anymore? Well, I didn't get one. And you said the same thing. You're like, boy, I guess you don't give a damn about our sponsors, huh? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, well, I sent you a, a, the, this whole thing about one of our sponsors, and you didn't respond. But I didn't get it. Anyway, what are your top three top games three. of the weekend? Oh, UNLV at Fresno. Fresno's favored by seven and a half. These two teams only have one loss combined this season. Each team sitting on one loss. UNLV, sneaky good. Sneaky good. See what they can do on the road, though, at Fresno. Right. That's a tough place to play. Uh, my second game to watch. There it is. Sorry. Oregon State. Come on, Van Wink. What the hell is going on with you? Oregon State at Arizona. Arizona is is good like they are arizona state's getting there they're almost there they're getting close to like major upsets they can't quite get over the hump arizona i think has has begun to arrive and they've got oregon state coming in oregon state's only lost once they're knocking on the door of the top 10 at number 11 they're only three and a half point favorites that's a really interesting game in the pac-12 but not the best game in the pac-12 i think this is the game of the weekend in college football Oregon at Utah, and I, that's where you guessed that, that, that I would be. But the Utah, I don't think, is a Learfield school, so we can't go there. Got it. O- Oregon is a six-and-a-half-point favorite at Utah. The Utes coming off that win at USC. Remember we talked last week, like, how the hell is Utah a seven-point dog at yeah. USC? How is that? They should be favored. They, and, of course, they, they end up winning the game. And now both of these teams have one loss, so it's kind of a playoff eliminator. Because I could see both these teams, whoever wins this game, competing for a playoff spot, especially Oregon. We talked on Monday, Oregon, I think, is the team that has the best value to win it all. Because they, because they can do it all. They, they are balanced. They've got a great, the most experienced quarterback in college history in Bo Nix. He started more games than any other quarterback in college football history. And uh, Oregon, I, I don't know. I, I'd probably take Utah in the six and a half points at home. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Always is there at Rice Cycles. Um, I'm really interested to see that game. All right, I'll give you my top three. A little Big 12. This week really is bad in college football. <clears throat> not great. Pretty yeah, horrible great. for late October. Uh, I'm interested in Oklahoma at Kansas just because Iowa State gets Kansas next. And, and how does Oklahoma bounce back, right? They got scared. Kansas is terrible on defense, but they can put up points offensively. So they're just the type of team that could potentially pull the upset here. I don't think they can do it without their their quarterback, Daniels, but we'll see. You're going to love this, Williams. We were looking at that game to do, and so we, we call up Kansas to see if we can start getting things in order to do that game. Yeah. And, and what do they say? We don't have a national radio booth. Wow. They were going to put us like in some kind of tent on the roof of the press box. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so no. And it's going to be brutal in the Midwest this weekend, too. Oh, like, geez, yeah. You can't rain and that. cold. They're actually saying it might snow here on Sunday. Wow. Yeah. So that would have been brutal. You made the right choice. Go to the Rose Bowl. <laughs> uh, number two for me, BYU at Texas. Quinn Ewers out. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's the that's really what makes this interesting to me. It's like 
is Texas going to be good enough without him to just withstand what's coming up until they can get him back? Because you, you've seen them live. Mm-hmm. I think when they're clicking and when he's out there, they can play with anybody in college football. Would you agree? Yes. Not saying that- well, they, they went into Alabama and beat, beat yeah. the Tide. Now, the, the, they've, the, the Tide has shown that they, they're they not great, but that's the only loss they have this season right now. So that that's the thing for me is this BYU team will score. Like the, they can put up some points, so this will be a interesting one without Quinn Ewers. Also protection. interesting is the fact that Arch Manning is now the backup, and if Malik Murphy struggles at all, yeah, we could get our first look at Arch Manning. No doubt. Final one is a football geeks game: Air Force at Colorado State, the wishbone versus the air raid baby. Total, you could not put two more different teams up against one another. Uh, Air Force is really good this year, too. Yeah, they are. They're a f- I, fun, I, fun I, team. I think Air Force is going to run the table and end up in a New Year's Six game. How cool would that be if they did that? Yeah. It'd be This awesome. day and age, to, to run that kind of offense, to be at a service academy and be that good, I, I, it's stunning. And then, you know, Jay Norvell, former Hawk, uh, Cody Mummy huge air raid guys against that like that'll be if you just like geeky football stuff watch that game i believe that's a night game watch that game on saturday night that to me is the most if i could just as a fan of football if i could watch one game all weekend it'd probably be that one because I, I think it's this is what i love about college football compared to the pros when you watch the pros everybody's pretty much doing the same thing now there's wrinkles the dolphins look different than the eagles the eagles look different right like mm-hmm. but 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 it's very similar in college football. We still get these matchups where it's, you know, total. You you could not have different philosophy, more different philosophies about the game of football than what Air Force and Colorado State will do. That's what I got for you. Did want to thank we had we had not gotten to thanking our friends from Terraplex Ag for being the sponsor of the month here on Iowa Everywhere. Jeez, you buried those bastards. Right I didn't at the mean very to. End I, of the show. I, I, I'll make it up to them, I promise. I'll make it up to our friends at Terraplex Ag. Great dudes. Looking forward to doing more with them in the future. We also didn't get to, real quick, um, Brock Purdy and concussion protocol. Mm. Buried that, too. Uh, so it's probably, he's probably going to be out. Sounds yeah. like there's a chance he could play. I, I saw Schefter tweeted yesterday that no player yet this season has gone into protocol and played the same week. And it was a Monday game, so it's a short week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did go through, you do the team walkthrough, it wasn't a full practice, but um, the fact that he was at least doing that is a decent sign, but Don't they I don't have know. a bye next week, too? They do, yeah. So you could keep him out this week, and then he's right. got that week. and just... I, I don't like this, though, because if Sam Darnold goes in there and oh, lights things up this week, it's going to be a major talking point. All mm-hmm. over. Well, see, yeah. first well, of all, anybody can do it, and maybe Sam Darnold can do it better in that offense. Yeah, good point. But, but I don't know, Chris, you're with me. Brock Purdy didn't play a bad game against the Vikings. The one interception no. he threw ends up being probably after he had the concussion, weirdly enough. He threw enough, two picks. But, he well, threw one two. Yeah, one, one of them, the guy the ran the wrong route. And, yep. you know, and the other one, it was just, you know, bad throw. He was. Is depressing. it possible that you guys witnessed the end of the Brock Purdy era? Listen to this troll. God, what do you? Are you gonna send Van Winkle off on a third? Like he just he just dropped out of the feed. Van Winkle's not even gonna respond. Hey, I to just that. told him he looked amazing. He looks great. He looks like he's chiseled out of stone. Peace out. I believe baby. Brock Purdy's coming back to Ames. For hey, Van Winkle, where's my my where's my Iowa Everywhere hat? It's in production. Gotta make them handmade, baby. Handmade by the Amish. <laughs> give me that. Give me that. Just smelly leather. Hey, uh, real quick before we drop out, TS has a tip for you, Hassel. Yeah. Watch it on YouTube. He says, "Go to your old iPhone settings. Go to messages. On my turn, old iPhone. Yeah. He says, turn off iMessage. Turn that off should iMessage. allow the iMessages okay. all to go to your new phone. Okay. Thank you. TS. There you go." 
Love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll post yeah, our I millions know. picks here coming up later on this weekend. I'm sorry I uh, had to use my phone and audio is probably not as good. But it probably still sounded better than William's voice. Probably. No, well, definitely. He's Chris Hassel. I'm Chris Williams. Maddie Van Winkle producing. Two guys named Chris presented by Fairway here on Iowa Everywhere.